In this video, we're going to talk about echelon form. And this is a way of setting up matrices so that you can solve very nicely and you can do it algorithmically. So what are the conditions for echelon form? Well, first we need a matrix. And there's three conditions which I've demonstrated below. First one is all the zero rows will be at the bottom. So if we have a row full of zeros, we shift it to the very bottom. The second one is each leading entry of a row is in a column to the right of the leading entry in the row above it. So a leading entry is a number that is not zero. So for instance, this four is a leading entry of the first row, and it is going to be above the next leading entry in the following row. So basically what this means is that they have to be staggered. So you cannot have another leading entry directly below another leading entry. The third one says that all entries in a column below a leading entry is a zero. So this sort of follows from number two, or if we have a leading entry up here, which is four, we're not going to have any non-zero numbers below it. So this is echelon form. As a rough example on the right here, this is very general. The stars just mean they can be any number that's not zero, or they could be zero. But these right here in purple are the leading entries of the columns. So we can see that these follow the conditions here. So the zeros are at the bottom. If we have a pink box, we have zeros below the pink box and anything to the right of the pink box can be whatever it wants. So that's echelon form. Some people call this upper triangular form. Uh, you can very easily make it a lower triangle if you want, but this is a nice way to set up for an algorithm to solve these matrices. There is one more type of echelon form and that is reduced echelon form, which is called REF. In this one, all of the leading entries are going to be one and the leading ones are the only non-zero entry in a column. So what this means is that we explicitly solve and we say in the first line it's going to tell us what x1 is. In the second line it'll tell us what x2 is. In the third line it'll tell us what x3 is. So we can explicitly solve. Now there's some cases where you won't have a solution for x2. It might be free, it might be zero, who knows what it is. So on this general example on the right here, we can see that the second line doesn't have an x2. In fact, it only has an x3. So this is okay. Basically what we want is echelon form, but there's only going to be one non-zero entry in a row. That's not the augmented row. And the rest are gonna be zeros. So why are these useful? Well, they look nice, they're easy to solve. And there's a nice little theorem here we can take a look at. And that's each matrix is row equivalent to one and only one reduced echelon form. So there's concepts that haven't been introduced yet, so I can't do a full proof, but here is the intuition. Let's say we have a bunch of numbers. Let's do something nice here. Let's do two, one, four, one, two, um, there'll be five. So we can reduce this to an echelon form. So we can have um, two, so we want to subtract two of row two here. So we want to have zero, negative three, and this will be negative six, one, two, five. We can reduce this further and we can switch the rows. So we can have one, two, five, and then we can multiply the first row by negative a third. So we get zero, one, two, and now we can subtract two of the second row from the first row. So we have one, zero, one, zero, one, two. So this has an explicit solution set. It says X one is equal to one and X two is equal to two. That's what it says. So if this had more than one reduced echelon form, let's say we had different numbers here. So we have one, zero, three, and zero, one, two, well then we'd be saying that it has a different solution set. So there can only be one reduced echelon form of a given matrix, otherwise we'd be saying that there's two different solution sets. And the way we have it set up is so that we have 
these rules of where the leading entries must be so we can be more specific when we say there's only one reduced echelon form. So this is the proper way to show it, and there's only one because if there were more than one, then there would be different solution sets for the same system of equations, and we know that's not possible. All right, so one more concept, pivot positions. Now these pivot positions are the locations where a leading one is in the matrix. So first we're going to reduce this to a reduced echelon form, and then we're going to figure out where the pivot positions are. So we're going to do a couple steps in the first one. Uh, we're going to take row two, and it's going to be row two minus two of row one, and row three is going to become row three minus four of row one, because we want to get these two numbers here to be zeros. So our top row is going to be the same, one, two, four, five, and then we're going to get zero, zero, 5 minus 8 is going to be negative 3, 4 minus 10 is going to be negative 6. Uh, now we need to do 4 minus 4 times 1 is 0, 5 minus 4 times 2 is negative 3, 4 minus 4 times 4 is negative 12, and 2 minus 4 times 5 is negative 18. Okay, so at this point, well, let's switch row 2 and row 3. So we'll do some row 2 and row 3 switching here. So 1, 2, 4, 5 will remain the same. I'm going to put 0, negative 3, negative 12, negative 18, and then 0, 0, negative 3, negative 6. Let's divide the second and third row by negative 3. So we're going to get negative 1 third row 2 and negative 1 third row 3. This will make numbers a little bit easier for us. So we have 1, 2, 4, 5. This will be 0, 1, 4, 6, and 0, 0, 1, 2. So we could solve it from here, but we want to reduce this to reduced echelon form. So we need to get rid of this 2 and these two 4s. So for our first step, we're going to take row 1, and we're going to subtract 2 of row 2. So 1... 0, 0. So we're going to take 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0. 4 minus 2 times 4 is negative 4. 5 minus 2 times 6 is negative 7. The second row will stay the same, and the third row will stay the same. So now we just have a couple of 4s to get rid of. So row 1 is going to become row 1 plus 4 of row 3. And row 2 is going to become row 2 minus 4 of row 3. And then we'll get an explicit solution here. So we're going to get 1, 0, 0, and we're adding 8, so that's 1. 0, 1, we're subtracting 4 of row 3, so this will be 0 and negative 2. And the last one will be 0, 0, 1, 2. So now, the pivot positions are where our leading ones are. So we see these positions there. So where do these positions correspond to in the original matrix? Well, these are the pivot positions. So these will be in the same place. These are where your pivot positions are. So we can actually talk about the properties of a matrix just given the pivot positions. We know that x1, x2, and x3 will have explicit values on the right here. We know x1 is going to be something, x2 is going to be something, and x3 is going to be something because we have three rows with this diagonal pivot position. So that is how we solve systems of matrices by reducing them to reduced echelon form. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If this video helps you, please share it because it helps me, and that is awesome. Thank you for watching.